from originally and, uh, and what you do right now? I'm Rusty Malinowski. I am originally from Humboldt, Saskatchewan, Canada. I now live in Claremont, Florida, and I'm a professional. I definitely didn't have the best odds of becoming a professional wakeboarder from where I grew up. Um, small town, I think a population of 5,000 people. We had a couple of lakes, but wakeboarding wasn't a huge thing as I was growing up. Um, I had the opportunity to try it a little bit later, 13, 14 years old, and absolutely fell in love. My it consumed me. I, that's all I wanted to do. I played all kinds of other sports, but that just took over and it's all I wanted. Um, short summers, but I, I crammed them in and rode as much as I could and every chance I had to get out with friends or whoever it was to, to get on my wakeboard and eventually got my own boat and spent countless hours in, the, you know, in our short summers putting the time in and learning and getting better. And as the years went on, I you know, was 18 years old, finishing up high school, and I still had that obsession and passion for wakeboarding, and that's all I could focus on and all I wanted. And I just, I didn't know why, but I knew that I had to be in Orlando because that's what everyone said. I didn't, at the time, I just, well, I have to go to Orlando if I want to keep pursuing this. Um, and looking back, I understand why now, but <clears throat> at the time, I didn't really realize what the big, deal was about Orlando until I got here and spent some time here and it's obvious the the year-round good weather so you're you're able to ride year-round if you're if you want to um, some years no wetsuit some years you might need a wetsuit for a month or two but you know the, the weather conditions allow you to have the year-round riding to to pick up um, for me it was the amount of riding I did that first year of being in Florida I might have done three years worth of riding because I just did not stop every day for the whole year. So I, I got a lot better, a lot faster than I would have ever gotten anywhere else uh, in a much shorter period of time. Did he land that fucking trick? Yeah. He did? The Indy Moby Dick 5, or Indy Moby Dick 5? Wow, that's fucked. So after I finished up high school, hopped in my uh, little TDI diesel Jetta 46, eight hours later, I was in Orlando, Florida. Uh, pulled up to Lake Frederica with Jeff here and uh, Brett Eisenhower, Ike. Uh, couldn't ask for two better role models as a young Canadian kid. Um, Jeff here being a Canadian, Brett Eisenhower, Ike being an Australian dude. Uh, Ike was on the tour. Jeff at the time, I believe, was team manager for Hyperlite. And um, they just really opened the doors to a lot of different people. and. Um, Jeff had a boat, Ike had a boat, we lived on the lake. I rode as much as I want, they'd pull me as much as I wanted, so it was like heaven for me as a young kid, just frothing, can't believe I'm in this zone, and getting the opportunity to go out and meet other pros and ride with all these amazing athletes that I've only ever seen in the videos or magazines. Yeah, Orlando was definitely home to a lot of us, but it wasn't really home, it's where we all, where we all came to. But I mean, just in, in my little Lake Frederica circle, there was Jeff here, Canadian, Ike, Australian, Dean Smith, Australian, Aaron Rathy, Canadian, Balzer would come down, Canadian, um, Watkins, Sanders, um, I, they, were, they were still around, the Heenies, um, and then of course your, your uh, American guys, whether they were from Orlando or not, but just different parts of America, and, um, there was just, it was just like a, a huge mix of literally all of the best wakeboarders at the time, all in this little, well, Orlando's not a big place. It's actually quite small little scene. And there was just tons of us and everybody was chasing that same goal. And it made it really accessible to push yourself and to, you know, so you think you're good. Okay. So you're, you think you're the man come to Orlando and you'll find out real quick that you can go out in a boat with three or four different wakeboarders you've never heard of, and they'll beat your ass. You're like, holy, when, who are you? How are you so good at wakeboard? Never even seen this person, right? So there's so many amazing riders in this small little city, and everybody's chasing that same goal, and that's to be the best. So the ability to get good on your wakeboard is, um, it, it happens really fast here, and it's very accessible, so. It was a, a fun journey and a fun way to like get your foot in the door.
get humbled really quick and then uh, go from there. Yeah, I, I believe that there was a, a very long period of time, I don't know, call it decades, where the, the city of Orlando, the mecca of wakeboarding, it was, you basically had to live here to become in that scene. There was all the opportunity of video and photography, the, you know, everything kind of happened here. And there was like a, a ginormous scene, the downtown life, like the Parks Bonifay was like a, in, I mean, he's a legend to me and he's like someone I've always looked up to in our industry, but he was like, he is still, but at that time, Parks going downtown or being somewhere, Parks is famous, you know? And there's a group of the wakeboarders that are like super popular, famous kind of guys throughout Orlando. It's uh, It was a scene that, you know, if you were in, you were in, and if you weren't, you weren't. And that's the way it is, unfortunately, but I was fortunate enough to get in that scene. I personally believe the double up is extremely important. I've always, ever since the beginning of wakeboarding for me, I would, so I had a, you know, a ski boat, a Pro Star 190. That's what I, we, what I got as a kid to learn how to wakeboard on. So the, in my mind, the wake was huge, but in reality, it wasn't. But the first time I hit a double up behind that thing, it was like, it blew my mind that all of a sudden I had almost twice as much time in the air as I would just riding be straight behind the boat. And all of a sudden I could learn a trick that I couldn't really ever land behind the boat. And that transpired all the way into like my early years of being a professional even. The first time I ever did, a, so it was like learn wake to wake, switch toe seven, then switch toe nine wake to wake at the time was still like kind of hard for me. Unless the wake, the boat was fully weighted and the wake was huge, there was tricks I like always would fall on. But if the wake was stacked, like I could land them. Then I started getting comfortable enough to like hit a switch toe side double up. Then all of a sudden that opened the door, it was like seven, nine, then sure enough, all of a sudden I did a 10. But that 10 didn't get landed behind the boat, like straight wake riding for me for like two years after I landed it off the double up. So without the double up, I personally wouldn't have ever progressed to the level I'm at, even though it took, you know, it took time to eventually get the tricks behind the boat without the double up. But had I not had the double up, I would have never landed those tricks. So for me, the double up is by far the most important part of wakeboarding. It's it's very skilled. You have to learn how to time them and everyone is, no double up is the same. So it's very challenging to, to get into them the same every time and line tension and having a good driver. And you know, back then too, we didn't have a zero off. So it was like your driver and half the time he was looking back and driving by hand and you'd be going 28 when you wanted to be going 24, but it worked out for you or it didn't. There. <laughs> Those are tight double ups, hey? Like, see the kink rollers, like, right there? Come on! Fuck! First crack? That right. kid's fucking so, so sick. So double or Nothing, to me, is one of the coolest events. It, it was Parks' idea, and I think this is the eighth one. So, for me, personally, I wasn't invited to the very first one, but I was there. That was like my first year in Florida. And I remember I just like hopped in the boat early in the day. I just kind of like snuck in and kind of sat there and hoped no one would notice me because I wanted to be in the boat to see everything. I was just so excited. And um, I spent the whole day in the boat watching 16 of the best wakeboarders in the world have um, the opportunity to land whatever they wanted, multiple tries at just these huge double ups. And at that time, Parks was doing best trick and biggest air. So you were having guys like Chad Sharp rail at like a double up, like railing at it, doing the biggest glides you've ever seen. Um, and then you had, you know, Parks doing, trying double mobs. Harley landed like a, a heel mob set. There was just a lot of progression in one day. And it was really cool to, Watch that firsthand the first year it happened then the following year I got an invite and I was so honored and it was just so like kind of like you made it if Parks Bonifay thought of you and wrote your name down and you were here it meant something for sure and uh, up until this year due to a little tweak I 
was at every single one and I was really bummed this year that I wasn't able to compete because it really does mean something as a as a rider to be one of these 16 guys um, pushing the sport and getting the opportunity with great companies like Red Bull putting money and pushing you know an event like this at a high level yeah to be one of the 16 pick to be here is a huge you know a huge deal as a rider and the 16 that are here today from the spectrum from Parks Bonifay, Danny Harf that have been around for a long time hitting double ups for decades to Gunther Oka he's he's younger but he's he's matured into a, a winning in innovative amazing wakeboarder um, and then you got like Luca Kidd, um, Thomas, um, there, there's a group of uh, Sam, uh, Sam killed it, did an Indy Moby Dick 5, which is awesome. There's, there's just like the very young, the middle, the older, but everybody's still pushing and it's, it's amazing. To be invited to Double or Nothing is huge, but to win Double or Nothing is a whole different deal. Um, I was fortunate and I was able to win Double or Nothing. And to me, honestly, it wasn't the money, it wasn't the experience that Red Bull provided going to race NASCAR is doing this awesome stuff. It was like to be standing up there and be like, dude, I won double or nothing. And like that feel is, is different. Like you, you're with the best dudes in the world at that time. And everybody, it's a fair playing field, same boat, same driver, same amount of double ups, no BS. And that day I won, that was a huge accomplishment and a great feeling. Awesome. Perfect. <clears throat>